Hey guys and welcome back to another video review on a graphics card. This one is the Nvidia Quadro FX 1100 for AGP. Big thank you to Bart from England. He sent this card to our channel to do a video. Quadro means this is a workstation card, unlike GeForce, which is the gaming range of video cards. But yeah, in past videos, we have found out that you can game just fine on such a workstation card. And there are some benefits and a few downsides. So let's take a closer look at the card. This launched in 2004. It's built on a 130 nanometer process. The GPU core is the NV36B. It supports DirectX 9A. We've got 128 megabytes of DDR2 memory with a 128 bit memory interface. The GPU runs at 425 megahertz and the memory is clocked at 325 megahertz. Comparing this video card with the GeForce, it's sort of a GeForce FX 5700, but with faster memory. So in terms of performance, it's somewhere in between the FX 5700 and the FX 5700 Ultra. Now something interesting, Bart told me that many of these Quadro FX cards are dying a slow death because the thermal paste that's underneath the integrated heat spreader can dry out and then over time the temperature rises. So on the FX 1100 he has removed the IHS and applied a new thermal paste. And he's so passionate about this topic, he's offering a deleting service for these Quadro FX cards on eBay. I will put a link down below in the video description. It draws power from the AGP interface, but also from the Molex power connector at the back of the card. For display outputs, we have two DVI-I ports. They're labeled one and two, so you can identify the primary and secondary output. There is a mini DIN connector, and at first you might think this is TV out, but it is actually a connector for a stereo 3D output, basically 3D glasses. This video is brought to you by PCBWay, our channel sponsor. Your one-stop shop for printed circuit boards manufacturing and assembly, but also CNC machining, 3D printing and more. Check the video description for links and more information. Now, before we take a look at the test system and run some benchmarks, let's talk about Quadro versus GeForce. So Quadro cards, they are more expensive and they were targeted at professional, at the professional market. Are they built better? I think they are. Some of the parts may be higher specifications and the GPU core may be higher binned. My personal experience is that Quadro cards last a little bit longer. I have less of a failure rate compared to GeForce cards. But the biggest advantage is there is less confusion to do with model numbers with the NVIDIA GeForce cards. For example, with a GeForce FX, well, you have LE and SE. Some cards have 64-bit memory bus, some have 128. How can you tell the difference? Whereas with the Quadro FX, 1100, there's just one model. It's got the full 128-bit memory interface and this, these specifications, they don't vary between models. So you're getting exactly what you think you're getting. And finally, let's talk about prices. Now, this might not be accurate anymore because prices have changed compared to when I started collecting these parts. But when I was looking, the uh, workstation cards, they were avoided. Everyone wanted a GeForce card and paid a premium to obtain one of those. So you could get the equivalent version in a Quadro card for a much lower price. And now let's go over our test system. We have a motherboard from Gigabyte. It is the 8PE800 for the socket 478 with a Pentium 4 running at 2.4 gigahertz. We have 256 megabytes of DDR memory running at 333 megahertz. The BIOS is version F9, which is the latest and greatest. Here we are in the BIOS. Press Control F1 to unlock some of the hidden settings. This is unique to Gigabyte motherboards. And then I'm loading the optimized defaults. I'm changing a few settings like 
the boot up floppy seek ram timings by SPD and I'm also disabling USB audio zero parallel game port MIDI and so on we don't need any of these resources and it can sometimes avoid issues with Windows 98. For storage we have the GoTek USB floppy drive emulator and also a solid state drive with the StarTech ID to SATA adapter. And whenever you're benchmarking, you wanna have a sound card because it can affect the results. We're using the good old Sound Blaster Live. I copy the Windows 98 installation files across. Here we have Windows 98 being installed. And after the installation, it's time to load the Intel chipset drivers. We've got version 6.2.1.1. 1001 from September 2004. After that, make sure you go into the device manager and enable DMA mode for storage. Here we have the ATTO benchmark and we can see nice performance maxing out the storage system at around 80 to 90 megabytes per second. For the video driver, we're using NVIDIA Forceware 56.64. I've configured the resolution to 800 by 600. We can see that this GPU has a temperature sensor. It's sitting in the 30s, so nice and cool. Talking about cool, remember the cool bits registry tweak? Run that one and it will unlock some hidden driver options, including overclocking and whatnot. And we're almost done. We just need some drivers for the Sound Blaster Live. These are Joseph's drivers version 2.1 and then a bit of tweaking change the sample rate conversion quality to high and I'm also tuning the mixer and finally I'm installing DirectX 9 and pretty much one of the very first benchmarks I run is 3 Mark 99 Max we're getting a score of 13,933 and here we have 3 Mark 2000 slightly newer benchmark also very uh, visually appealing and we're getting 13,065 points. And now let's have a look at some gaming benchmarks. GL Quake is first and we can see really nice resolution scaling as we increase the pixels, the performance goes down. So at 640 by 480, we're getting 621.6 FPS. And once we get to 1600 by 1200, we're getting 148.1, which is still silky smooth. In Quake 2, we can see a similar picture, very nice resolution scaling going on. And the same in Quake 3, only at the lower resolutions, there's a little bit of a CPU bottleneck happening. Once we switch to direct 3D benchmarks, it's looking a little bit different. In Expandable, we can see we are Pretty much CPU limited at all the resolutions with a tiny weakness at 1600 by 1200, but still over 100 FPS, that's amazing. And in Draken, we can see pretty much the same image around 88 FPS across the board, only at 1600 by 1200, the performance dips down a little bit. For Windows 98, there are two compatibility aspects that a lot of you out there are always uh, inquiring. The first one is palleted textures and the other one is support for table fog. So let's have a look. Fog is working just fine. Here we are in Thief 2. You need to go into the settings and enable fog in the video options. And here we go. This is the game running. Fog is being displayed just fine. Star Wars Shadow of the Empire is another classic test to see if fog is working. If you have an ATR Radeon card under Windows 98, very likely table fog is not supported. But on this video card, no problem whatsoever. Palleted textures, however, is not supported. We can see here in Final Fantasy VII, the configuration utility shows it's not supported. And Final Fantasy VIII does exactly the same thing. It's indicating that the palleted textures feature is not supported and we can confirm that with some screen corruption right here in Final Fantasy VIII. 
And now let's check out a few games. Screamer 4x4, a fun uh, outdoor four-wheel drive racing game. Quite tricky and yeah, I'm definitely out of practice. The game can be launched with three different executables, one for Glide, one for Direct 3D, one for OpenGL. With NVIDIA cards, I recommend you stick with OpenGL and here the game performs perfectly fine. And I've also tested Tomb Raider the second title and Tomb Raider 3. Both of these games work just fine. Uh, both have a configuration utility before you launch the game where you can tweak some of those aspects. We are running at 800 by 600. And again, everything runs silky smooth. And here we have the very first Splinter Cell. Now this is a game I haven't showcased in a while. The reason is on most video cards, it doesn't render correctly. It originated on the original Xbox and it uses a very interesting technique to display lights and shadows. And ideally you have a GeForce 4 Ti. On the GeForce FX, I would say with 98% of the time it renders the game correctly. So it's pretty good, it's not perfect, but it's very good and much better compared to a newer GeForce or on a radio. And at this point, I usually pick up one of my favorite games and I play a little bit longer sharing my experiences. But, well, I just came back from Austria. I'm jet lagged and I really wanted to get a video out in the new year. So there wasn't enough time. But looking at the benchmarks, uh, there's no doubt that pretty much any Windows 98 era game will run silky smooth on this video card. So guys, what is my take on the NVIDIA Quadro FX 1100? All in all, it's a terrific video card. The performance is outstanding. Even at 1600 by 1200, you can uh, enjoy really high frame rates. The driver options are also very good. You will find decent compatibility with most games. Maybe not as compatible as a 3DFX Voodoo card, but those video cards are pretty hard to get these days. Table fog is working fine. The only compatibility weakness is really palleted texture support, but it's not a big deal. There aren't too many games out there that are really affected with the Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII being the most uh, famous titles, so to speak. I want to hear from you. Do you think these workstation cards are built a little bit better compared to GeForce cards? I'm curious if you have any experience in terms of failure rates and if it matches what I'm seeing that the Quadro cards and the Fire GL cards from ATI, they just seem to last a little bit longer than the GeForce and Radeon cards. And what is really nice is that there's only one model. You're getting exactly the same specifications. Unlike with the GeForce cards where there's an SE or an LE or for example with the FX5200, some have 64-bit interfaces, some have 128 and that can really affect the performance. And lastly, with the prices, these workstation cards, they should sell for less than a GeForce, but who knows, with retro PC parts recently just yeah commanding insane prices, well, I don't know what the market is out there at the moment. Please share your experiences if you know more, but if you're patient, you might still be lucky to pick up a workstation card at a discount compared to a GeForce or a Radeon. And now I wanna hear from you. What is your take on this video card, the NVIDIA Quadro FX 1100? In general, the FX cards, they are quite um, controversial, you could say. Back in the day, uh, the reputation wasn't that great, especially with DirectX 9 performance. They were really behind the competition. But now, for retro gaming, they are sort of quite in demand. They are one of the last uh, types of video cards that have all the features under Windows 98 gaming. The performance is good, the compatibility is great, and they have DVI, which uh, works really well with, with modern monitors. You can even connect them into capture cards or into a TV with a 
DVI to HDMI adapter. So uh, bridging the, the world between old and new. And when I started my YouTube journey, documenting videos, I used a FX5200 in my Socket 7 retro gaming PC, capturing Windows 98, but also MS-DOS, the BIOS screen. So compatibility was actually really good. And that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all the support and uh, looking forward to producing more content in 2025. And yeah, thank you. And I shall see you soon in another one.